Okay, class. So today, uh, we've already visited why we need to learn the problem-solving process. Now, I want you all to consult the example that I've given to you in your worksheet. Take 30 seconds to read through the example and underline the key words in the example. Your 30 seconds started 29 seconds ago. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I've given you uh, worksheets to share with your partner. Okay. In an actual class, we will all have worksheets, but I'm saving paper here. Yeah. Okay, your 30 seconds are up. Now, Strider. Can you tell me what the keywords are in the first sentence of the question? Uh, $42 in subscription fees. $42 in subscription fees. Very good. OK. Um, Heidi, can you tell me what are the keywords in the second sentence of the question? Uh, increase by 20, went up to 45. Increase by 20? Went up to 45 dollars. And the total subscription fees went up to $45. All right. Now, Chin Hong, can you tell me what are the keywords in the third sentence? Reduced by 10 cents. Reduced by 10 cents. Again? Yeah. Anything else? Per member. Per member. The fee per member reduced by 10 cents. And finally, Xin Yi, can you tell me what are the keywords for the last sentence? How many members? OK. So this question is about the membership of a CCA, as you all have found out. Okay? And we are trying to compare the situation between two years. Okay? The first year was 2011, and the second year was 2012. All right? And finally, in the last sentence, we are asked to find out the number of members there were in 2011. Okay? So what you've just done is part of the first step of problem solving, which is to read and understand the problem and to organize the information given to you. Okay, so now we're going to proceed with organizing the information. There are many ways for us to organize the information. And in this case, because we are doing a comparison between two years, I propose that we organize the information using a table. All right? So this is a table that I've actually drawn out already. Okay, it's not on your worksheets, but as I go through, you can copy it down. Now, the table has two columns, which are 2011 and 2012, and we are comparing the situation between these two years. So the first piece of information we were given, if you consult the question, was the total subscription fees. Can somebody tell me what it was in 2011? $42. $42, very good. What about 2012? 45 $45, excellent. Both of these pieces of info are from the question already. Okay? The second thing we were concerned with was the number of members. All right? Do we know the number of members in 2011? No. That's in fact what we are asked to find out, right? So I'm going to start off by putting a question mark here. Okay? What about in 2012? Do we have any information about the number of members? Yes. Yeah. Okay, what do we know? Question mark plus 20. Question mark plus 20. Excellent. <laughs> wow, you guys are really smart. So question mark plus 20. Excellent. And the third piece of information was to do with the subscription fee per member. Do we know the subscription fee per member? No. But is there any way for us to find out the subscription fee per member using the info we have here? Yes. Yes. Kahong, can you tell me how we can do that? Hint. OK, we have two pieces of information already. We have the total subscription fees and the number of members, right? Excellent. Okay, we can do 42 divided by our favorite question mark. All right. Do we know the number, the subscription fee per member in 2012? No. No, we don't know it either, right? So how can we make use of existing information? Lillian, can you tell me? <laughs> can you tell me what the Subscription fee per member in 2012 is? 45. Excellent. OK, 45. Excellent. Thank you, Lillian. OK, and the last row in the 
table. I've left it for us to check the answer later on. Okay, we will come back to the last row of the table. So the second step involved in the problem solving process is to use a variable to represent the unknown. Do we have a clear unknown in this question? Yes. Yes. Where is the unknown? Question mark. question mark. It's blatantly obvious, right? So what I'm going to do is to erase the question marks that I've written down and replace them with our favorite letter X. So do we always choose X? You can actually choose any other letter that you wish, okay? But X is just chosen by convention. Somehow the old mathematicians, they love choosing the letter X, so we have carried on choosing X, okay? <laughs> now the third step of the problem solving process is to form an equation that describes the problem situation, okay? Forming an equation is not always very simple. We can break down the process further by forming a word equation first. If you can describe in words what is going on, it's going to help you better to form the equation eventually, okay? Ryan, based on what you've read in the question so far, can you describe in words what happened, what changed between 2011 and 2012? Uh, more, more people subscribe. Okay, and as a result of that? Uh, it got more expensive. Uh, it got more expensive for the whole group as a whole, right? Yes. But there's something else that happened which is quite critical here. Yeah. Slightly cheaper per person. Slightly cheaper per person, exactly. By how much is it cheaper per person? 10 cents. 10 cents, okay? So, to summarize what Ryan has said, the difference in subscription fees per member between 2011 and 2012 was 10 cents, okay? And we can actually make use of this information to form an equation, okay? Let me just show you the word equation that I have formed based on what Ryan has just told me. Okay, magic is already there. So, the word equation is subscription fees per person in 2011 minus the subscription fees per person in 2012 equals to 10 cents, all right? Now, I would like to call upon Christine to come up to the board to write down an equation that describes this word equation, okay? Based on information that we've already written down in the table above. Come, Christine. You can write it down here. Okay, I'm sorry. Excellent, Christine is doing a very good job so far. <laughs> so far. And you guys, at the same time, you should be writing down the equation in your own pieces of paper. Don't wait for Christine to write it for you. Very good job, Christine. Um, could we all give her a little round of applause? Okay, stop. <laughs> now, the next step, you've already formed the equation, right? You've already formed the equation and you're nearly there, okay? In the previous lessons, you've been learning how to solve such equations and I've given you several practice questions on how to solve such equations. So I'm just going to give you one minute, one tiny minute to solve this equation quickly. Could you please go ahead and do it now? And I'm going to ask for responses after this. So I should be seeing you solving the question furiously. <laughs> I see no paper burning. That's not a good sign. The first person to solve the equation will get a chocolate, but I didn't bring any today, sorry. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Okay. I see that some of you have already solved the equation, so I'm actually going to go ahead and reveal the solution, all right? So is there anyone still doing the equation solving? No. Lillian. Okay, Lillian, we'll wait for you for another 10 seconds. All right, all done. Okay, good. Uh, okay, so let me reveal the solution to you all. Okay? The solution is like that. Did anybody not get this solution? No. Did anybody discover a different way of solving the whole equation? Can you all see? All okay? 
Okay, I trust that you're all okay. Very good. Now, the fifth step of the problem solving process, you're nearly there. Okay, you're nearly there. You've already solved the equation. The fifth step is to accept the relevant solution and reject the irrelevant one. Okay? The difference between what you're doing now and what you've done in the previous lessons is that we have an actual scenario that we are looking at. Okay? It's a real life problem scenario. And not all the solutions that you get will fit the scenario. Okay? Previously, you could have got two solutions and both you can just say X is either this or that. Right? And you could have left it at that. But now, you need to analyze carefully the question given to you and pick the correct solution. Okay? So for this question, what do you think is the correct solution of the two of these? 70. 70. Why is it 70, Victor? Can you tell me? Because uh, money cannot be negative. Money cannot be negative. Uh, is X money? Oh, yeah. The number, number of students cannot be negative. Number of students cannot be negative, right? I mean, what, is it, what sense does it make to say minus 120 members? Does it make any sense? Therefore, the number of members here has to be positive, and it is 70. All right? So, fifth step, we have already accepted the relevant solution and rejected the irrelevant one, and it is 70. Okay? All right. You might think, okay, I'm done with the whole thing. I've already got my solution. It's 70 members. All right? But let's always stop to check whether our solution is correct, okay? And to check that your solution is correct, you have to revisit the information that was given to you in the problem question, okay? So we have already made a nice job of, I mean, we've done a nice job of organizing the information given to us. So let's go back there and check if what we found holds up, okay? So how would I check? What would I do to check? Emmanuel, could you come up to the board and Show us what you would fill in in those two rows to check. I trust I can erase this equation, right? Yeah. No. Yes. It's on the board. The writing is on the wall. Uh huh. Come. <laughs> yeah, Emmanuel. So let me write down, help you a little bit. Okay. Go ahead. And in the meantime, I want you all to check whether your solution is correct as well. Okay, let me give you a clue. Okay, let me give you a clue. We have to try and see whether the critical piece of information given to us in the question is satisfied if we use the solution that we have obtained, okay? And just now Ryan told us, the critical piece of information was that the subscription fee per member between 2011 and 2012 reduced by 10 cents, okay? So you have to go back and check whether this thing is correct. and write the answer down for him, okay? 42 divided by 70 should give me 0 0.60, which is 60 cents, all right? Now, 45 divided by 90 is 0 0.50, okay? So let me write that down over here. And the critical piece of information that we were given, which is that the Total subscri the subscription fee per member was reduced by 10 cents. Is it satisfied? Yes. Satisfied. Wonderful. So that brings to a close the entire problem solving process. We've managed to go through the process. First, what we did was to read the question and organize the information properly. And here I suggested to you all to use a table because we are making comparisons between 2011 and 2012. Okay. Second piece of information that here we had to a uh, second step that we had to do was to represent the variable using an unknown. Okay? Represent the unknown using a variable. And we did that by erasing away the question mark and putting in an x. Okay? Very simple. Third one was to form an equation. And I told you all that it's easier for you to use a word equation first and then form the 
algebraic equation. Fourth step was to solve the equation. Fifth step, we went ahead and we accepted the relevant solution and rejected the irrelevant one. Over here, I'd like to make one final point. Okay? When you accept the relevant solution and reject the irrelevant one, you have to put down this word, rejected. Okay? Rejected to make it explicit that you're rejecting one solution. Okay? And to be even more kyasu, I would put down the reason for my rejection. I would say number of members cannot be negative. Is that abundantly clear to everyone? Very good. That's the end of my lesson. Thank you.